I believe an honest examination of the record would reveal that it has come in part from the United States, including under two former ambassadors. Todd Robinson, in particular, who has aligned himself with uh, left-wing political actors in the country and abroad, has also come from an activist out of control, UN agency, CSIG, funded in part by the United States, which was the subject of a Helsinki Commission hearing, which I chaired, that examined the role played by CSIG and Russian state actors, principally VTB Bank, sanctioned by the US Treasury Department, in intervening in Guatemala's legal system and persecuting a Russian family, the Bitkovs, who have fled the long arm of Vladimir Putin. Human rights champion Bill Browder, the man who tenaciously and brilliantly led the campaign for the enactment of the Magnitsky Act and Global Magnitsky, after the government of Russia arrested, tortured, and killed his lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, in November of 2009, has championed the Bitkov's case. Mr. Browder testified at my April 27th hearing uh, in 2018 on their behalf and said, in part, inexplicably, VTB Bank gained the legal status as an interested party in the migration case against the Bitkovs with the support of CSIG. In January 2015, the criminal case against the Bitkovs was opened at the direction of CSIG, says Bill Browder. Immediately after that, he testified that, quote, 70 armed police officers raided the Bitkov's home, arrested Irina, Igor, and Anastasia, and detained them in cages behind the parking garage in the main court building in Guatemala City. The Bitkov should have been granted asylum, not prison. An earlier appeals court ruling ruled that the Bitkov's uh, offense was perhaps only administrative in nature and punishable with a fine. Yet Igor was sentenced to 19 years in prison, and Irina and Anastasia was, were sentenced to 14 years each. We will hear from one of the Bitkovs, Irina, as a witness uh, today. Indeed, this strange alliance between Cixing and the Russian actors and the role played by key left-wing political figures such as attorney Alfonso Carrillo in mediating this alliance met with what I can best describe as incuriosity by former Ambassador Robinson who has been nominated by President Biden to serve as the Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs at State. I hope that my Senate colleagues inquire at confirmation as to the reasons for this in curiosity, if that's what it was, by Ambassador Robinson with respect to Russia's role with CSIC and also Russian influence on Guatemala's constitutional court, whose composition was heavily influenced by Mr. Robinson. In that regard, I commend a column from the always excellent Mary Anastasia O'Grady, published this week in the Wall Street Journal, where she states, and I quote, Mr. Robinson's record raises serious questions about his suitability for the job as head of INL. As she points out, as ambassador, Mr. Robinson, quote, earned a reputation for meddling in domestic politics in ways that went well beyond the scope of his responsibility. He was, was known, for example, for pressuring Guatemala's Congress to confirm judges aligned with his political views. I ask that Ms. O'Grady's article, as well as a series of articles, again, I'll be entered into the record and commend them to my Senate colleagues as they consider Ambassador Robinson's nomination. I also commend an excellent statement of the record submitted by Stephen Hecht on impunity of impunity observer, which elaborates on Todd Robinson's intervention with respect to the composition of Guatemala's constitutional court, in particular with regards to the appointment of former Justice Gloria Porras. And here I must remind this panel that the principle of independence of the judiciary resides within the context of larger principles, namely the importance of constitutionalism and respect for the separation of powers. One cannot, in the name of safeguarding the independence of the judiciary, allow a handful of judges to run roughshod over their constitution and violate the separation of powers. Yet as amply demonstrated by, by Mr. Hecht, uh, what the constitutional court did under Gloria Porras or he describes as twice participated in a ruling that stopped Congress from processing cases against her. It is worth noting that prior to her visit to Guatemala, Vice President Harris met quite publicly with both Gloria Porras and Thelma Aldana, uh, the former Attorney General of Guatemala in the United States. Indeed, the reason that meeting was held in the United States and not Guatemala might be because Thelma uh, had two outstanding arrest warrants in Guatemala 
on charges of corruption. This is another area of inquiry for the Senate with respect to Ambassador Robinson. When it appears for, when he appears for confirmation, what was his role in protecting and promoting Thelma Aldana? At our Helsinki hearing, we received testimony that a former Guatemalan uh, official named Myra Veliz was at the heart of a passport and fraudulent document ring. There was incredible allegations of army corruption of RENAP, R-E-N-A-P. Yet instead of investigating her, Thelma uh, Aldana gave Velez a position in the Attorney General's office and protected her. Indeed, we saw the prosecution of low-ranking functionaries by Aldana and CSIG and the disproportionate harassment of the Bitkovs who received documents after entrusting the Cutino law firm, another politically connected actor was, uh, was someone who somehow escaped the scrutiny of Aldana. Thus, I think another line of inquiry for Ambassador Robinson would be the extent of his awareness of Thelma Aldana's role in failing to investigate those officials, such as Myra Veliz, allegedly involved in the distribution of fraudulent documents to foreign nationals. And what were the national security implications to the United States of this apparent, apparent incuriosity? To make a final point, and what alarms me, and I believe colleagues such as Senator Marco Rubio and Senator Roger Wicker, who have criticized the intervention of actors such as CSIG and Russia in the workings of the Guatemalan judicial system, are the double standards. Of course, we are against corruption and efforts to undermine the rule of law and the independence of the judiciary. But what is so infuriating is that these important principles are so often applied in a one-sided manner and used to advance the interests of the political left. If we are going to fight corruption and defend the rule of law in countries such as Guatemala, it is important that we do so in an even-handed and fair manner, tackling wrongdoing by both political right and political left with consistency, predictability, and commitment. I thank you, and I yield back uh, to my good friend and colleague.